I was trying to think of a reason that the universe might necessarily exist, but now I think I just have an idea for why it might have eternally existed. So think about perhaps if all the if all the black if all the black holes in the universe eventually swallow up all the matter in the universe and then they swallow up each other and everything is reduced to a singularity. Yes. Right? This is probably going to happen. Then perhaps at that moment a force can be created that would cause it all to expand again, just like it did in the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And this would mean that perhaps for that moment, time is again included, but then time would come to be again. And this may have happened before our Big Bang, such that the universe mm -hmm. may be doing this over and over again, contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding. So then there wouldn't have to be the explanation of an external cause to create it out of nothing. Yeah. That it would just be expanding and, and shrinking again. Right. Uh, these types of models were called oscillating models, and they were floated in the 1960s. And the Hawking-Penrose singularity theorems tended to put a death knell to these oscillating models, because what the singularity theorem showed was, as you said, that a universe that is in gravitational self-collapse will go down to a singularity, and that there, time and space will simply come to an end it's physically impossible for anything to pass through a singularity to re-expand and to start a new universe ag uh, again. So that the, the uh, model uh, is physically impossible. You would have to have some sort of new physics that is contrary to what we now know in order for this to happen. A second difficulty is that if the universe could oscillate like that, uh, scientists discovered that entropy would be conserved from cycle to cycle. That is to say, the second law of thermodynamics would show that entropy would continue to increase in each oscillation. And this has the peculiar effect of making each oscillation have a larger radius and a longer expansion time. So that the cycles or the expansions would get bigger and bigger and bigger. What that means is as you trace the cycles back in time, they get smaller and smaller and smaller until you finally come to an absolute beginning of the universe. So that this multi-cycle model you described has an infinite future, but it only has a finite past. So that it turns out not to avoid the beginning of the universe that its original uh, modelers uh, crafted it to avoid. There are other versions of the oscillating models that are back in discussion again today, but uh, none of them has been able to be extended into the infinite past. Uh, that's the real difficulty. The, the, the problem is not just how do you get the universe to bounce you know, from a contraction to a, an expansion, but how can you extend it into the infinite past? And that has, uh, be, that's been uh, the nettlesome problem with all of these oscillating models is that uh, they can't seem to be extended to infinity past. I guess at least in, able, in order to be able to do that, you would need some kind of new physics, which we have no access to. Not right, having a right. Mind. It would have to be something that is contrary to what we do know now of, of physics. Um, and of course, that's always possible. That's why science is always tentative. Uh, but one can say that Leibniz's argument, I think, enjoys the support of contemporary science. Thanks.